Namaste, Soul Tribe. Welcome back to the Matrix Oracle. This is your pick a card reading to align with your success. This is in honor of Venus transiting the zodiac archetype of Capricorn, November 11th to December 7th, 2024. You can choose according to your intuition or your zodiac placement. I would suggest your Venus placement, but again, it's up to you. So let's get those piles ready. Ooh, okay, we have pile number one. Okay, please, dear universe... Let us know how to align here with our success. Pile number two. Hmm. Okay, we're going to change it up. One, two, and three. You saw how I wanted to go forward first. So we're going to allow it. There's something about letting your vibration move you into alignment here. Okay, strong... Um, reflection and energy message already through just the shuffling so let's see here for the zodiac signs i'll reveal the cards after okay let's do that okay pile number one we have scorpio we have leo we have virgo and we have sagittarius Pile number two, we have Aries, we have Aquarius, Gemini, and uh, Libra. Pile number three, we have Cancer, Pisces, Taurus, and Capricorn. All right, let's look at those cards. We have the Moth Spirit. Surrender now. Ooh, beautiful. Pile number two, we have the lizard spirit, dream the world into being. Okay. Pile number three, we have the elephant spirit with learn from the past. Gorgeous energy. All right. So again, choose according to your intuition or your zodiac placement of your choice. I would suggest Venus, but again, it's up to your intuition. I will see you there for your messages. All right, pile number one, welcome to your messages to align with your success. Okay, you picked the beautiful card of the muff spirit that says surrender now. Now, I do want to mention because I don't know why, but the numbers uh, just feel significant. In the angles of the zodiac, okay, the number 39 connects to an energy that talks about your receptivity, allowing and honoring your senses, your sensitivity in terms of receptivity, like understanding and getting energy messages uh, through the body through your senses and it's interesting because if you watch the beginning when we were picking the cards this card was supposed to be pile number three and it kind of slid in front of the pile number one okay so there's something about letting spirit move you in the places that align you with your success and I feel that it's only through dissolving any type of resistance, dissolving any type of, um, you know, constriction, especially hyper mind focus. I'm just being reminded because it is in honor of Venus transiting Capricorn. Capricorn is a zodiac archetype that speaks of the mastery of the mind. It's an ascension guide in terms of the step-by-step. -step. And here, it's about relaxing your mind and honoring your vibration and the senses and the vibration of your surrounding. I wouldn't be surprised with this energy that maybe 
uh, some of you are being called to surrender so you can move in a new place or for an opportunity to move your way and you towards it as well, okay? If you chose according to uh, Zodiac placement, there's Leo, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Virgo. I'm going to put them aside, but not too far because sometimes there's <laughs> messages where um, the Zodiac comes up again. So let's see your messages, my dear pile number one, to align with your success. This is a deck I usually um, pick for thought patterns, okay? So those are the power thoughts. And we have, ooh, divine wisdom guides me. Beautiful energy. It says, I am guided throughout this day in making the right choices. Divine intelligence continuously guides me in the realization of my goals. Oh my God, I am safe. Wow. Pile number one, there's something that is really aligning with your life path and your life purpose. When I was meditating on this picker card, you know, it, it is about your success, but I did hear in the background your dharma. So where your life is calling you in terms of your duties and, and your alignment to your purpose. There's something very spiritual um, with this transit, you know, so let's get some guidance here with the mermaids. This is usually a deck that I use for emotional alignment. So here, your thought patterns and your alignment to divine intelligence is through tapping into your inner wisdom and surrendering. You know, that's, that's such a beautiful process. I would suggest, I'm going to already put it um, in the notes for the description. Some of you, if you want to um, meditate, surrender is the portal. And the ones that have access to the Star Family YouTube membership, all levels, I'm going to suggest the inner wisdom activation. I love that frequency. I love, love, love that frequency. So you can connect to your inner wisdom, the goddess, uh, God energy source within. Okay, so let's get some messages from the emotional waters here. Because maybe we can get some clarification on how you can align. Yeah. It's funny because I felt like, is there more cards? And I heard one step at a time. <laughs> okay, so let's take it one step at a time. It says, water flight. Heaviness lifts. Burdens are cast away. Weightlessness. Maybe some of you, there was um, some heaviness. Some of you, you may have a connection to Orion, okay, in your chart that is connected to some of the thought patterns or thought process that could have made you um, hold on too tightly to certain thought patterns. Why am I saying this? Because first of all, there are all those whales here and my Orion starseed frequency has uh, whales and orcas in the background. Every time I, I see them, uh, I'm being reminded of that specific frequency. And Orion starseeds have a lot of knowledge about mastering their mind. Okay, so some of you, maybe there's some type of wisdom about your uh, mastery of your mind. But because there's some surrendering, watch that it, it doesn't over, override your receptivity. You know, in terms of brain waves, when we're using um, too much of the mind, we can miss on certain signals that are more subtle. 
that the neurites, so the neurons of the heart, are able to receive. Okay, so there could be something here, and some of you, uh, you might want to uh, work also with the Orion frequency. Do you see what I see? Oh my God. Do you see this little ladybug? Hi, baby. Hi. You guys, that, that ladybug is my symbol for miracles. And also a specific, <laughs> a specific mantra that I was using, oh my God, at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, which I love, which means I am divine love, uh, which is Ahem Prema. Okay, so uh, we have the ladybug right there that is giving us a certain alignment. Some of you, you know that I like to do uh, cosmic alignment sessions. Right now, I'm taking a break just because I'm still in the process of moving and settling and I have to furnish the house and everything. Um, so yeah, <laughs> As there's a lot going on. But uh, yes, you can listen to the Orion frequency and chant the mantra, Ahem Prema. And I remember that I used to use this Padma uh, Mudra, which is the hands like a cup, because I loved how it made me feel like I was receiving the abundance of the universe. Wow, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I am so grateful. I feel so grateful for this like little animal uh, intervention here. Yay. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry, but just, it's just, yeah. It makes my heart smile. Anyways, let's move to the next step. Okay. We have, oh, I mean, what? And look at who is bringing the gift. This little hummingbird. Okay, some of you, pile number one, your connection to the animal kingdom and the messages from spirit through the animals, through the plants is like off the chart. I really feel this for you. Really feel it. There's some type of like, you know, gift that you're receiving uh, from tapping into those different expression of the energy and spirit world. I love it. I was called to notice the starfish. And if I'm not mistaken, in this deck here, uh, the starfish talks about unlimited possibilities. There's something here about your potential that is unlimited and your alignment to your success, okay, is coming from surrendering. So probably dropping into a brainwave um, that allows you to surrender, allows you to relax and let go of the mind. So you can let the universe show you and guide you along the way towards the success. And it's going to come to you with a lot more ease this way. You know, for a little story, my dear pile number one, the surrender is your portal. I actually created laughing <laughs> because I had a panic attack. <laughs> um, there was a lot that was going on, very heavy stuff that was going on in my life, and I couldn't breathe. I thought it was an asthma attack, which felt like really like it was. I couldn't breathe. I almost thought I was going to call 911. Um, and I got an acupuncture session. And as soon as the path on the needles on my back just, you know, were in me, it's like it, it just dropped this heaviness. And I'm pretty knowledgeable about the organs because they're connected also to the zodiac and their pathway and how it interacts with the zodiac, it interacts with certain energy. So when this happened, I knew the pathway um, that was mapped on my back through the needles. And I was like, oh my God, this is a way to 
to surrender because, you know, the panic attack came from a lot of overwhelming thoughts, you know, that made me feel trapped and um, that created that body reaction. So I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but probably a lot of you choosing pile number one or with those Venus placement, you have to acknowledge how your body is the wisdom of your body and how it reacts to the vibration of its surrounding, okay? And right now, what I'm feeling for you is that as you relax into your current surrounding and you can, it's going to be easier for your success to meet you. So you're not going to have to hustle. You're not going to have to work hard. It's going to open itself to you. And I think that it could be something that you're not used to. Thus, some of my suggestions as far as the frequency work. Okay. All right. So is there any questions? Of course there's questions. (laughs) <laughs> There's always questions. Can we have some more details about pile number one's success and what wants to come uh, their way? Or what is needed for this alignment? Uh, let's see what we have here. Okay. All right. So right away we have the two of water beautiful energy, the two of cups, union of your feminine and your masculine, so heart, mind, coherence, very strongly here. I'm also being reminded of the placement of the two of cups in the zodiac wheel, which are the degrees 0 to 10 in cancer um, that speak of making sure you're healing your memories Uh, that you are able to also uh, spark, you know, when you're like healing your memories or you're doing all this self-love, that allows you to, you know, be almost like be vulnerable with the parts of you that needs that space, that needs that healing, that needs that tenderness. Yes, when I said the word vulnerable, I felt the resistance of uh, the Orion's energy because it could be uh, something in the vocabulary um, about weakness, not wanting to appear weak, um, not wanting to appear soft, having to put a certain shell, a certain um, appearance for you to align to success, you know, that you need to drop here uh, because that's, that's old school, <laughs> not, but not the old school. That's like old matrix program, okay? That uh, the universe here is guiding you to release. And then we have, wow, the king of earth. It's the king of pentacles. And this is uh, Virgo energy. This is being practical. This is being guided. But again, you're going to have the insights uh, and the reason and the... Um, self-mastery as you allow and trust your own potential trust your vibrational connection to the universe to your senses uh i would say like i'm getting the illustration of um you know when you're going on an adventure you know let's say a hike and you don't know if you should go onto the path on the right or the left Trust how your body is called towards a certain direction. Trust it because whatever you're meant to experience are part of the alignment to your success. Even if sometimes it doesn't feel like um, it was the easiest path. We're not talking about um, what is easy in terms of, uh, you know, because sometimes what's easy is like it's just familiar, you can go towards unfamiliar places and still go through this with ease because you're not trying to resist the unknown. You're actually allowing 
things that are unknown to you, to speak to you, to guide you. And I feel that's part of your alignment to your success here, part of the divine wisdom and the divine guidance that's coming your way, uh, pile number one. Let's see now a message from um, the goddess. I had picked this deck, but I didn't know if I was going to use it. But it seems that now is the time. <laughs> you see, see that's a vi that's a perfect example. I chose this deck, and as I was getting ready, I wasn't sure of it. But I was like, you know what? It feels like it's going to be there, but I don't want to assume it's going to be there. So I'm just going to put it aside in a place where I can access it. And there it is. So there's something about this type of illustration, this type of dynamic, just like trusting some of the things that guide you towards keeping something close or, you know, for example, let's say you're going on a trip and you're telling yourself, well, let me just bring a poncho and you're going to the Car Caribbean islands, you know, like some place where you maybe not expect any rain uh, through that trip. And then something happens. Um, there's a rain or it doesn't have to be when you get there. It might be that you're plane is delayed and you have to be in a place where it's raining. It's like you trusted that impulse, uh, not through reason, but through just that feeling, that feeling, okay? Trust your feelings. Trust your feelings. Okay, a message from the goddess. Wow, you look, see, you, you see how the goddess just went smack onto the receptivity. When you do this, you're going to align with divine wisdom and the wisdom that gets you to your success, that gets you to your purpose. It says here, Shina Masta. Oh, that's, that looks a lot like Medusa energy. So some of you, again, uh, I have Medusa and all the muses and goddesses readings. I'm going to link for my goddess and starseed rise up um, YouTube star family. I'm going to put the latest, uh, Medusa reading, Medusa reading, because it just, you know, it just feels, <laughs> it's just, the, yeah, the, the synchronicity is too big here. In order to grow, the soul may need to separate itself from that which it wants relied upon. Mm. Oppression will be overcome. Do not cling to what has been. Sometimes the best way to heal from the past is to cut it off completely and focus on inner regeneration and reorientation towards a more fulfilling future. You shall know true love and freedom. I'm saying true love here because there's something about the Two of Cups that speaks of you know, union. Some of you, if that's something that you are looking to manifest in your life, that could be also tied to your success or tied to your concept of success. And I would say, you know, all aspects <laughs> of life kind of um, make that fulfillment happen, um, that feeling of fulfillment happen. So um, there's definitely some type of manifestation of a relationship that can come forward for some of you if that's something that you have as part of your um, desires because we're working with Venus here and that's very heart-centered. But as a general, I'm seeing that um, with the goddess, there's definitely a message of the ways that you used to go about things. And that could be working hard, hustling towards your success or relying uh, on a specific, I don't know why I'm saying this, but a specific psychic gift, you know, there's this change. And here it seems that it's it, a lot of you, for example, if you were um, more like clairvoyant, clairaudient, there's something more about claircognizance, you know, clairsentience that is manifesting here. Maybe some of you are going through an initiation phase of a new clair, of something that is unknown to you. But ultimately, for everyone, there's just a way to align to success with less 
hardship with less feeling like it's costing you a lot it's heavy emotionally uh, physically um, there's just like an ease that is coming to you so that's what i have for you my dear pile number one please remember to like those videos to support the channel to grow i'm sending you many blessings your way if some of you want to take advantage to my latest promotion for 11 11 portal it might still be up at this time for sale uh, when i said this it was 22 11 on this reading so i thought that was interesting i will see you soon in the next readings namaste hi pile number two welcome to your pick a card reading to align with your success you picked the beautiful card with lizard spirit dream the world into being the number 38 in the angles of the zodiac uh, relates to the energy of rituals of celebration of um, ceremony so having a certain routine a certain practice and probably here daydreaming visualizing maybe creating a vision board, seems to be part of your message to align with your success. If you picked this pile according to zodiac placement, we have here Aries, Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini. I strongly suggest your Venus placement, but again, it's up to you. You might have more than one um, pile, by the way. Okay, so let's see what we have for you. As far as aligning with your success, the reel that I chose uh, for this is about the energy of aligning versus hustling, okay? This is all about aligning to the vibration of your dharma, of your success, of your life purpose. Those cards are to support um, messages for your thought patterns. And we have, I prosper wherever i turn beautiful mm, let's get some more details about this i now see opportunities for abundance everywhere i am blessed and i am prospered beautiful so affirmations for you pile number two seems to be part of maybe the rituals you want to use uh writing down some goals um yeah Maybe some of you, you like to use pictures for your vision boards. I have one way of doing this because um, I've traveled so much in my life that I don't really do vision boards because I move too much. Um, I create a file on my computer where I drop pictures that I like that refer uh, to my visions, to the things that I want to manifest. And I just always feel like I'm letting the universe just work its magic into the concoction of those images. So that could be something that might inspire you, my dear pile number two. Um, that's something I personally love doing. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Those cards are more about the alignment of your emotions. Okay. We have, ooh, Atlantis, rapid development, excellence, and success. I got to tell you, uh, some of you, this is coming, <laughs> this is coming your way fast. I feel that maybe some of you have a very strong heart field, you know, like when you think about something, you're able to feel it very deeply. And as a result, you're able to manifest very fast. And I think that, you know, the people that I know with this ability, um, whenever they put their mind and heart to it, it's just like it comes very fast. And what usually plays against, you know, the people that I know that have this strong attraction power is not knowing what they want, not knowing precisely what they want and them being in limbo, okay? So I feel that if that's going to be part of the questions here because I have the tarot cards, but before I ask <laughs> about maybe 
uh, for the ones that do not know exactly what to dr- daydream about or maybe doubting uh, their own personal desires. Maybe some of you, you have internal conflicts about your desires. This is why uh, you might um, stay in limbo at times. I want to mention something about the rituals, okay? Because we talked about the vision board. We talked about the affirmation. We talked about the visualization, the daydreaming. Um, with Atlantis energy, crystals. Crystal magic. Carrying a crystal, charging crystal, Maybe some of you, uh, I love wearing rings with crystal, jewelry with crystal. Uh, You might want to, for example, uh, visualize your dreams, visualize what you want to manifest and have in your hands or wear on uh, with you a certain crystal. Like I feel like some of you um, may be picking the energy of a specific crystal towards a certain goal. You know, I don't know why, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a uh, citrine. Uh, maybe some of you, if you feel like you need confidence towards the manifestation of a certain gold, a gold, <laughs> a certain goal, <laughs> um, that could be helpful. Um, I'm, I'm feeling also the energy of the tiger's eye. I feel that some of you, you need the confidence. Maybe you're trying to aim for something different, something new. Um, maybe that's why there's this doubt that I'm feeling in the background. Um, but yeah, that's something part of the rituals of your alignment with your success pile number two. I love this. I love this. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay. As far as some guidance with this, maybe doubt, this limbo, maybe this lack of confidence. What the, what is that? What is that? <laughs> okay, it's two cards. We have the nine of earth, which is the, pen, the nine of pentacles, okay? And the four of water, which is the four of cups. You see here that like crystal ball? This is, you know, I feel that some of you, you've already manifested success. It's definitely shown here, okay? But there's this feeling that Every time you manifested success, there was still an unsatisfaction, something that was missing, okay? And I wonder if it was the emotional fulfillment. Like money is not enough. Material things is not enough. It's very clear for you. Power, money, status, yes, it's it's all good, said and done. And I think that some of you... That might be why sometimes there's that limbo. It's almost like, um, do I really want to materialize this or that? Because last time, you know, when I had all of this, it just didn't feel, you didn't enjoy it as much. Okay, so let's get some details on how to resolve this energy here. Find emotional fulfillment when you're manifesting. Because I don't think manifestation is a problem for you by number two. Okay. Let's let's give it some space. Okay. I'm changing the order. Hmm. Changing the order. Is there something that you have to change the order of? I haven't looked at the card, obviously. You can see that. But I wonder if it's the order of the things you focus on. You know what? It's almost like I'm... I'm I don't know what the cards are, but I need to say it before I even look at them. I feel that you tapping into a feeling versus tapping into a specific materialized goal is the different, the difference here. Because I don't like, I see you like projecting yourself like, okay, a house, uh, money, this or that, that is like physical manifestation. I'm not feeling the the love behind. I'm not. It's it's almost like 
connect first to the feeling of love or the feeling of gratitude or the feeling of, you know, being surrounded by your loved ones and, and, and celebrating uh, moments with friends. And then maybe like if it was, for example, a house, a home, like when you're like among your friends, you imagine this, like now start looking around you and seeing the house and the environment and things like that. Because I feel that some of you, maybe uh, some of those desires, they're based off the, you know, illusionary matrix that uh, we're overcoming. You might have more simple, you know, desires than you realize. Yeah. Anyways, let's look at this. <laughs> I don't know where I was going, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's starting first with the feeling. How do you want your dreams to feel? How do you want your success to feel versus what is the success and how you're going to get to success? We have vulnerability. Open your heart. Allow yourself to be tender under the nine of pentacles. This is someone that is, uh, has their money uh, right, that is single, that is happy, that has everything materialized for themselves. But you see here how the masculine energy is holding the feminine that is surrendering. Some of you, you might, if you hesitated with pile number one, or you're listening to one and you want to listen to your zodiac sign and it's in pile number one, there's definitely something about surrendering and messages and alignment um, energy message that can help you. I would say for some of you, if you feel you have a hard time surrendering to your heart, uh, I already listed the surrender is the portal, but I have one that I'm thinking about mostly, which is the heart blockage in my vibrational pharmacy. Okay. I'm going to list that as well for you because maybe there's, um, a past, you know, I am hearing a past wound, maybe something that wounded you relationship wise that would, um, yeah, maybe some, I, I don't, it might not be for everyone, but I'm seeing a situation or a scenario like, um, you know, being in love and not having the material means, feeling or thinking you need the material things to be with that person. You know, like creating a certain wound, especially if there was some rejection here. Yeah. Okay. Then we have Imrama, wander voyage, crossing deep waters, pilgrimage, journey of the soul. Beautiful. That reminds me in the tarot of the Six of Swords, <clears throat> where you have to let yourself be moved by the waters, I'm hearing. Uh, so that means moved by your heart. Oh, wow. You know, it's like, what you have here, pile number two, okay, to align with your success, you really have to be moved in your heart space. Things that you, this is going to make you feel successful. That's the whole difference. It's not a problem for you. I can see it in the cars. I can see it in the energy to materialize things physically. It's not a problem for you. But feeling the fulfillment and the joy of it is a whole different aspect here. And that's what this reading wants you to experience. All right, let's get a message from the goddess. Okay, let's see. I feel we have to talk about something. <laughs> like something from the past. I feel that this, is, this has been created or there might have been something that happened or occurred uh, whether it's been, um, you know, raised in a home where the focus is on results, on performance, grades, 
uh, status. I feel that there's a certain wound here and pattern that has been almost like a, affecting, and I was going, I heard infected, you know, infecting, like a wound, something that is infecting you, that if you keep on keeping that, that habit, um, it, it just keeps on getting worse. That's a lot. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay. You know what? I feel as some of you, it's just like, uh, maybe when I said that's a lot, maybe some of you, you feel like if you start opening up your heart or being vulnerable, you're thinking that it's too much for others. That's a lot. I'm a lot. It would be too much. That's not the case. I feel as some of you, you have to um, trust a little bit more how people would respond uh, to your vulnerability here. And honestly, if they didn't respond well and thought that, that was too much and they walk away, then good riddance, I have to say it, because that's how I feel, okay? So we have this beautiful Kali energy, and it says, there is not always a need to try to grapple and conquer Sometimes the need is simply to let go. Just because another has created a certain reality for themselves and is attempting to draw you in, it does not need that you need to participate. You have the divinely granted gift of choosing where to invest your energy. Be kind to yourself, okay? So that sums up a little bit what we talked about as far as maybe a past relationship, some of you, maybe you were also in love with someone that was materially uh, based in terms of like they, they needed a lot of things. They were a lot high maintenance, okay, and they uh, refused to be with you for that reason. Um, but there's, there's something here about the material aspect that uh, you don't have to continue doing that it's it actually i feel that you're you're not realizing that a lot of your manifestation and your success is because of your big heart because um that's the strongest that's the strongest field that's the magnetic field and yes when it works it has to work with the electrical field of the mind so but that that's step number one is your heart and, and you have that. Let's see here. I want to ask, is there a particular thought pattern for pile number two uh, that we need to remove? Okay. Is there something we can tap into, into the minefield? This one jumped. A lot of the purple here is connected to the crown. So... The crown, when you're working with kundalini energy, is the lotus flower, is like the thousand petal flower. It's the result of your essence. It's the result of the life force that flows through you. So I feel like there's a renewal that needs to occur here as far as your whole identity or your perception of yourself, pile number two. It says... <laughs> Uh, do I really need cards? Because I can't like that. that, that it's, the synchronicity is just so big. I am deeply fulfilled by all that I do. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. Some of you, to align with your success, I you might feel like you need to hold on to this certain job or certain, uh, you know, expression of yourself. Uh, who you thought you were, but there's definitely something that is awaiting for you that's going to feel much more fulfilling. And if you don't know what that is and how to manifest it, go into your heart. Remember what I said about the moments that are dear to your heart. You know, if that's being among friends and enjoying, you know, meals together, games together, game night or whatever, just uh, be in that surrounding and then let it just shape what comes next as far as the material aspects. You know, it's almost like 
Focus really on those feelings and then look around in your daydreaming, in your visualization. And if you're not that advanced, some people have a hard time with visualization, even though I don't feel that's most of pile two here. Um, trust that rehearsing more of your heart alignment will bring that success. It will bring you the beginning of the uh, alignment of the pieces, the opportunities, the people, everything. Just practice and rehearse your heart alignment, okay? Let's see what it says here. Each moment of the day is special to me. As I follow my higher instincts and listen to my heart, I am at peace with my world and affairs, okay? So again, that's the message that we wanted to know as far as what could be in the way it's fulfillment. We had it here and it's a repetition of that message. So trust in your alignment, trust in your heart, trust in the vibration and the field of your heart to align you into the manifestation of that success. Dear pile number two, I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light, and please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your messages to align with your success. So you chose the pile and the elephant spirit. Learn from the past. With the number 25 in the angles of the zodiac, this speaks of spiritual wisdom, but also magic. So the fifth element there's something here, maybe um, some wisdom from past lives that I'm feeling for you. So let's look at this. If you chose according to zodiac placement, I strongly suggest your Venus placement. We have here uh, Cancer, Pisces, Taurus, and Capricorn. I'm going to put them aside and we're going to look at those thought patterns first. Yeah, I have a deck that I like for the thought patterns. So how do we align here uh, with success for pile number three? There's something from the past. I'm not, uh, I wouldn't be surprised because of the number 25. This is something that is, and even like that elephant that uh, with all those paintings that looks a little bit tribal, that it is a um, past lifetime ability that you might be channeling or need to channel, or need to bring about, to manifest. Mm, love this. Okay, so let's see what we have here for pile number three. All right, it says, my healing is already in process. And behind it says, my willingness to forgive begins my healing process. I allow the love from my own heart to wash through me, cleansing and healing every part of my body. I know I am worth healing. Hmm. With the past and the healing, I need something else. What are we healing from? What are we healing from here? What are we healing from for pile number three to align with success? Okay, those cards, that card, you know what? I put it be at the bottom, but I want to look at it. Okay, the three of earth is the three of pentacles. The three of pentacles speaks of triunity. It speaks of a divine union between feminine, masculine, and spirit. So is it your connection to source? Is it your connection to magic? Is it your connection to the wonders of life? Maybe some of you, you had to experience some hardship, some very contrasted experiences, thus maybe letting go of your connection to God, source, the divine. Mm. And then we have... Ooh, justice. You know, I find it interesting because in another animal deck, um, card deck, 
uh, the, I have uh, an elephant that is associated to the justice card. So I, when I saw it at first, I thought it was the justice card. And then it said this. So there's, uh, and you have the number 11. Okay, so right away with the number 11, I'm being, uh, and I'm channeling this on 1111. 11, so look at this. <laughs> um, there is the message in the numerology about the challenges of that number. It is a master number, a master builder number, and it is uh, carrying the resonance of the number one, which is all about leadership, but also the number two, which ask of the number one to also care about the harmony of their relationship. So there might be something here that in the past there was a lack of partnership, not just with the divine, but maybe a part of you that is either the masculine was overbearing or the feminine. Okay, so over analyzing, using too much of the mind versus the intuition or the opposite. Okay, there's something here that seems to be uh, maybe inherited, learning from the past, maybe something you witnessed as a child. Some of those patterns also, I would say, because I'm being reminded of spirit and when I said God, if you want to call it God, maybe there is some uh, wound around uh, religious upbringing. Maybe that led you to reject spirit in that sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you, it's also, um, you know... Um, rejecting certain message or language of spirit for example tarot cards astrology this type of like esoteric or divination tools uh, because of the perception of the religious establishment and having like a strong um, reaction to it yeah there's definitely here some guidance for you pile number three to be able to align with success thanks to the things you already witnessed in your family, in your life. You know, it's almost like you already have earned a lot of your wisdom. And your success is going to be based off taking advantage of those experiences, taking advantage of what you've learned from the past. Okay? So now that we know this, okay, so that means like for you to align with your success, what you already experience, what you already witnessed, what you already um, practiced, um, rehearsed is going to be useful for your success to manifest. And now let's take another layer of this alignment. I want a new thought pattern. <laughs> I want a new thought pattern. We are healed. Okay, there's a lot of things I wanted to fall forward. So we're going to do this again. Okay. All right. And there we go. I begin now, today, to open myself to ever-increasing prosperity. This is the first time I'm picking up this card. But I, when I, I begin now, today, there's like, um, maybe some of you, you were in a waiting period. You were waiting to heal from certain patterns. You were uh, waiting to reconnect, to feel reconnected to source or to the magic of life in order to begin today, to begin with this alignment, to begin with uh, going after your dreams, going after your success. Oh, that was the behind of the card. <laughs> okay. Uh, it says, my income is constantly increasing. Wow. It feels that, um, you know what? I feel like this, how do you say it? Like it's money. It's an investment term. Compounding. It's almost like your the wisdom that you earn 
from this life, as some of you, I would say, if you've been going through a spiritual awakening and you've gathered like past lifetime uh, awareness, visions, or you got sessions, Akashic sessions, or things like that, um, you remember some of your own patterns, you remember certain wisdom, you're compounding this energetically. And I feel like you have a certain escrow in your spiritual bank account, if that makes any sense. And that has just been waiting for you to be at that moment for you to access it. Okay. So let's see now in the heart field, okay. In the emotional field, how can we align? <laughs> how can we make the jackpot? <laughs> you know, it, like I'm seeing like literally you playing, you know, having played this game of life. Okay. And now having like um, wanting to access this, this whole uh, flow of abundance. Very funny, um, funny and interesting image. I don't know. I'm like feeling casino energy, you know? Um, yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a whole windfall that wants to come forward here. We have two cards. So let me see here. I want to put it there. Okay. And we have Wow. Energy field adjustment or cleansing and health. Okay. Some of you, it's because of this. Okay. We need to do a little bit of cleansing. I would say, um, that could be a good practice for you, some of you. Maybe you're someone that is very empathetic and that picks up a lot on their surrounding, their vibration of other people. And that's a very good practice to make sure that you meditate in the morning. Well, that's, you should be cleansed at that time, but uh, more at night when you're going to bed, having a practice that uh, clears your field. I do have, and I will list it down below, an aura, not only cleanser, but strengthener. Because, um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm very empathetic and I was absorbing so much. I was like, I need something that does both because I would spend so much time just cleansing and then so much other like other practices to strengthen my field um, that this is what I created and I find it very, very supportive, you know, to be able to recognize your own energy and not let other external energies influence or just, you know, be confused with your own. I feel that it could be something that comes from the your past experience. Maybe some of you, you had a tendency to uh, take upon yourself other people's vibration or just because of your desire to harmonize because we have the number 11, um, especially if you have 11 in your numerology or your birth date or your name. Um, I would say that maybe you're desire to harmonize your environment made you not realize that you were absorbing other people's energy and that would be heavy on you and that would have created certain patterns that you had to um, learn from and now realize that it's going to be part of your success it's going to be part of you hitting the jackpot okay that energy that I'm seeing uh, with um, how do you call this slot machine <laughs> yeah I'm seeing a slot machine Okay, and then we have sisterhood, friendship, allies, compatible souls, loyalty, joy, and delight. Ooh, I love this. Um, you might have a lot of 11th house energy here just because of the sisterhood. It doesn't have to be the gender, but it's just like being part of a group, being part of a community. Um, that might be part of how you're going to manifest your success. Now, the word loyalty stands out strongly. Joy and delight, that might be part of your characteristic. But emotionally, I feel that your income and the things that you compounded, it's almost like there's so much wisdom. And remember, there's the number two. So you're someone that is meant to manifest uh an increase in your income, but constantly increase in your income because your purpose, your dharma is connected to other people. So it's most like what money you're manifesting 
what purpose and through what gateway you're manifesting this money is meant to support others also in their money. I love this. It's in the same thing with compounding. It's not just your money that compounds, it's other people's money and their opportunities and their connection to spirit because of your connection to spirit, your connection to source. Okay, let's get more messages. I feel there's um, the goddess that wants to speak. Let's see what we have for you. Whoa, whoa. Okay, we'll take... The, you have a lot of messages. There might be a lot of people picking that car, that pile or whatever. Um, it feels like a, there's a lot of wisdom to you. A lot that wants to come through. Wow, look at this. Beautiful card. Kama of Kali. You are being offered a spiritual gift from the Divine Mother. Your path need not to be one of endless exertion. Connecting with pleasure as a path of personal empowerment, intending to bring spiritual benefit to the collective, oh my God, through the softening and opening of your heart is an act of worshiping the Divine Feminine. Let yourself receive her loving gifts. So confirmation with many things we already said, but uh, when it says your connection to pleasure, and this is fifth house energy, and that's the opposite of the 11th. Some of you may have certain planets in 11th or 5th. You might have, uh, you know, a connection to those houses or those archetypes. Uh, that would be a Leo and that would be Aquarius, okay, uh, in your chart, maybe planets and placements there, your alignment to your success is definitely coming from you feeling joyful, you enjoying what you do, not feeling like it's something you hate or you don't enjoy or you don't like. So can we get some guidance about this? How can we make sure that pile number three uh, stays in alignment with their joy because I feel like um, maybe the influence of others could have kept you from this vibrationally let's see there's some tenderness I, I feel like you're following your intuition is very important don't listen to others okay make sure you listen to your own wisdom um and sometimes others will be challenging your intuition. So they're not here to deter you. They're just test, <clears throat> energy test. <clears throat> I feel things in the throat. Okay. Um, so thought patterns, communication. Mm, let's see. I feel two cards here. Okay. Let me move this a little bit. Okay, we have, ooh, the king of water, beautiful king and master at their emotion. So master also of their intuition and the messenger of fire. So my question was, you know, how do we make sure you're staying in this alignment of your pleasure, your joy? Um, that's a confirmation of following your intuition. And the messenger, remember how I, I had um, that throat itch or kind of like a slight block? It's a messenger. So let yourself speak with enthusiasm. Let yourself communicate how enthusiastic you are about your project. Um, follow that. Follow that voice. Follow that voice and, and that expression. This is the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands also connects in the association of tarot and the zodiac to the summer uh, days. Some of you, maybe you have some placement in Cancer, Leo, or Virgo that could be significant, okay? Certain placement that are there because those are the three zodiac season that connects to the page of wands 
I don't know why I mentioned this, but okay. There's something else. There's something else. <clears throat> yeah, my throat. So let's see if there's a certain thought pattern that could be blocking your throat. Okay. I had that type of a question also, uh, you know, like energy block of the thought for pile number two. Some of you hesitated with, um, with pile number two. That might be something there for you as well. Okay, let's see. Uh, what is that thought pattern that could be blocking pile number three's throat? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the other side. I open new doors to life with the shoes. You know, the shoes are usually when you're going into, stepping into a role, stepping into a character. Maybe some of you, um, you're meant to do something new, something different, stepping into a new character. Okay. Okay. Let's see what it says. I rejoice in what I have and know that fresh new experiences are always ahead. I greet the new with open arms. I trust life to be wonderful. It says new, 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 new. It's a new, it's, a, it's something new. Okay. So allow, that, that could be the block is allowing yourself to try something new. Go for it. That's going to, uh, is there a way for, uh, go after something new? Is there something uh, we can know that can help? Oh, pile number, <laughs> pile number three, patience. Be patient with yourself. But that's also the card of temperance, which brings me back to the 11, I feel like what you meant to manifest your success involves other people, okay? A community, brotherhood, sisterhood, um, thus, as a result, you have to know your own energy field. You have to trust your intuition and you have to trust the things that make you feel enthusiastic and inspired. But at the same time, because it involves many other people that are meant to compound their energy with you, okay? It's like you're still in a role and leadership with others, just making sure that you're not trying to over-please or over-harmonize, but yet still find that very fine-tuned balance because it's the justice. Those scales are very sensitive, okay? Um your wisdom from the past is going to be part of how you're going to attract things step by step. Okay, so be patient. People are meant in opportunities, people, events, situations are meant to meet you halfway, okay, for you to manifest those new opportunities, those new doors. It definitely feels new because you had this whole message with... Um, with uh, healing first. So you had to heal. And I feel like also with uh, the divine mother, some of you um, using your feminine wisdom, your sensitivity, your receptivity, your connection to your heart, to doing things that feel good to you, that are pleasurable, that are, you know, brings you joy, um, is new. So just thread step by step. You know, just like I'm feeling also like dancing shoes, <laughs> like, you know, like just learn the new dance, learn those new ways to partner, partner up, not just with others, but partner up with spirit and take it like step by step. So that's what I have for you, my dear uh, pile number three. If some of you are part of um, any levels of uh, the star, the star membership for uh, the music, so all layers and membership, you can use the inner wisdom activation. I already listed it uh, in the uh, video description for pile number one. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light, and remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste.